You notice all those voice-activated gadgets lately? I've got a voice-activated phone here. It's a pretty nifty little device. I don't have to push the buttons. I know you're not supposed to do this when you're driving, but I can just, you know, push this little button here on the side and I can say, Robert. And it says his name back. Hopefully it'll ring. Go ahead, answer. Hey, son, how you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, would you do me a favor? Would you stand up for a minute? Okay, now you can sit back down. You can turn your phone off now. <laughs> Gadgets aren't the only thing that are supposed to be voice operated. Children are also supposed to be voice operated. Thankfully, mine is, especially since he's bigger than even I am. Turn to Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Voice activated. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, by the voice of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Friend, everything that has been made has been made by God to be voice activated. We think it's a recent technology. God used it to create things. He spoke, and it happened. The voice of God has great power. Psalm 29, 45 says, The cedars still shake, the mountains still shake when God speaks. We have record of God speaking even during the ministry of Jesus. Sometimes those around could hear and understand and sometimes they could not. We know for a fact that God spoke in creation and it is a test of our faith and His creation still responds to that voice activation even to this very hour. But God didn't just create by His words. He also sent us the law. He spoke to us about our condition. Look at Exodus chapter 20. Beginning in verse 18... By the way, chapter 20 and verse 1 says, And God spoke all these words, saying, and then we have what we call the Ten Commandments. Verse 18, Now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. God was up on the mountain speaking, and it seemed to the people as though things were coming apart at the seams. And they backed way off. They, they weren't sure they wanted to hear the voice of God. 
Back in verse 19, then they said to Moses, You speak with us and we will hear you, but do not let God speak with us, lest we die. They were afraid, it seems, to hear the voice of God. Perhaps that was part of Israel's constant battle at obeying him. They were not used to hearing the voice of God. They were always afraid of it. In Hebrews chapter 2, the writer says this, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and then was confirmed to us by those who heard him? Already in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1, the writer has said, God, who at various times and in various manners spoke to us in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by His Son, whom He has appointed heir of all things, through whom He also created the worlds. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Jesus' very designation denotes God's desire to have all things be voice activated. That was Jesus' title prior to Jesus. He was the Word. The very communication of God. God spoke on Sinai. And now He speaks to us through His Son. He not only created but he has also taught us what it is we need to know. In fact, the voice of God is so powerful that it can bring back things from the dead. Romans 4.17 says, God gives life to the dead and calls into existence that which does not exist. Most of us know John 11.35, the shortest verse in the English Bible, Jesus wept. Anybody know what John eleven forty three 43 says? Lazarus, come forth. And guess what happened? He did. Voice activated. But it's not just Lazarus that Jesus plans on calling back to life. Look at John chapter 5 and verse 25. John chapter 5 and verse 25. Most assuredly I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear it will live. Voice activated. I guess the question for us is since God intends us to be this way, are we? In Ezekiel chapter 37, the prophet has a rather unusual occurrence. This might be somewhat of a long reading, so I'd like you to join me in Ezekiel 37. I'll still be there by the time you catch up. I'm going to start in verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in this open valley, and indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And so I answered, O oh Lord God, only you know. And again, they said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, 
hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will put sinews upon you, and bring flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath into you, and you will live. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, a sudden rattling. And the bones came together, bone on bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. And the skin covered them over. But there was yet no breath in them. And so also the Lord said unto me, Prophesy now to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. And say to the breath, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they might live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Speak, Lord. And I will obey. Voice activated. It was used to creation. It is used to inform us. It is used to bring things that are even exceedingly dead back to life. You might feel as though your cause is beyond hope. And I suppose to humans, it might indeed be. But with God, it's not just that all things are possible. It's not just that all good things are probable. It's that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. voice activated all scripture is God breathe that means when we look at what is written here we are seeing with the physical eye something that God has spoken with his mouth and saw fit to record through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We have the very written down words of God. It is unfortunate that the Bible is not thus venerated in that category, in that regard, today, as it has been in generations past. But I expect that most of us hold that high view tonight as we should. And that scripture that is God-breathed is useful to us. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. And you, God made alive. You who were once dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and of those of the mind, we were by nature children of wrath. Who listens to the voice of the Good Shepherd? 
only friend his sheep. And who are they who do not listen to the voice of the good shepherd? Those who are not now of his fold. And who do they listen to? They listen to the good shepherd's enemy. The serpent. The beast of old. The father of liars. The accuser. The slanderer. See, the reality is everybody is listening to some voice. Well, they might think it's their own. I'm my own person. I do what I say. Well, you might believe it, friend, but it is not true. You are either listening to our Heavenly Father in compliance and obedience to His voice or... You're listening to Satan. Let's go on with Paul here in Ephesians chapter 4. But God, who is, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy... Because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in these trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. So it is by grace that you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the ages to come He might show the exceeding riches of His grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Where does faith come from? The Word of God. This whole process is something that God spoke into existence. The very opportunity that we have to have our sins forgiven is voice activated by God's command. And He too had an obedient son. I don't know if He called him on a fancy little cell phone like I did, but, but you know, He said, Son, this is, this is what the plan is. And Jesus did it 100% from A to Z. He dotted the I's and crossed the T. Because in humility, Jesus did not consider his equality with God something to be grasped that made himself nothing. And he listened completely to the spoken will of God. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast, for we are his workmanship, created. How does God create? Through his word. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We could go on and on. In fact, in many verses, the point is expressly said that we know these things are true because God speaks them to us in the gospel. Friend, we noticed some verses that said God spoke the created things into existence. That he brought what was dead back to life. That he taught us, instructed us in the things we have to go. If he did those things physically, if he called this physical world into existence by his powerful word... If he gave us a physical law at Mount Sinai to obey, and now a spiritual law through his own spoken word, his son Jesus Christ, that we are all the more obligated to obey, if he can even bring back the dead, literally, physically speaking, by speaking to them, should we not be certain that when he says he can do it for us spiritually, that it is 100% true? See, the difference is, it's a little harder to see these results. Now, I know some of you are thinking, boy, Phil, you lost me about 20 minutes ago when you picked up your cell phone. I appreciate that. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you're just throwing the big, the big dog's food, and whoever else can get it, that's you're just glad for that. This is one of those times. 
When Jesus calls Lazarus from the tomb, everybody can see Lazarus is there. When God speaks a world into existence, everyone can see it's there. There's no denying it. When Ezekiel is in the valley of dry bones in Ezekiel 37, and God says, I want you to speak to them on my behalf, and you speak to them, and they'll rise up to life, and they do, there's nothing to misunderstand. You can't deny it. But now God just is speaking in us a change of condition. It, it results in some outward behaviors. I don't deny that, but it's a little less tangible, isn't it? A little bit harder to grasp. I mean, I've baptized lots of people since I came here. Mo many of you are looking me in the face right now. Physically speaking, you don't look any different. I was kind of hoping when I came up out of the water, I'd look a little different. But you know, I just came out looking the same old ugly self as I went down. But by the power of God's voice, my soul was activated into a new creation. My soul, which was dead was brought to newness of life. You might not be able to see it, and I might not be able to see it in you at all times, but I know it's true because God says so. And whatever God says, I believe it. I watched a movie this afternoon Second Hand Lion, that was that the title of it? Have you ever seen that movie? That's a pretty good movie. One of the plot lines in the story is this boy is asked to believe these fantastic stories about his two uncles. He's thinking to himself the whole time, yeah, right. That that didn't really happen. And in one pivotal scene. One of his uncles, the more curmudgeonly one, looks down at him and says, Listen, boy, you believe these things because it's best for you to believe them. That's not very far from what Paul said to the Philippians, is it? Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, Whatever is pure, lovely, admirable, if anything be excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Listen, friend, there is nothing more true or noble or right or pure or lovely or excellent or admirable or praiseworthy than the very Word of God. If you want to think about something important, think about something eternal. Think about something that God has said to us. If you want to say something important, then speak of things eternal and speak where the scriptures speak. Otherwise, you can just be quiet. That's how powerful the voice activation of God is. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news the spoken good news of Jesus Christ where it is the power of God unto salvation. Look at one last passage, 2 Corinthians. We were there this morning. I want to go back for one more look at chapter 5. Verse 14, for the love of Christ compels us because we judge it thusly that since one died for all, all therefore must die. And he has died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves but for him who died for them to rose again. Therefore, from now on, 
We regard no one, no one, according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet we now regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 20, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading, pleading what? Pleading his case, speaking his word, pleading through us. Now we are in the place of Ezekiel. Now we are standing before a valley of dry bones. And we are commanded to preach the only word to them. The only word to them that can bring them a newness of life, that can make them a new creation. If we speak it, they will live. Those who are willing, if we speak it not, no one lives. And once more, having spoken it, Should we not believe with all of our heart what we have said? We once regarded Christ from a worldly point of view. Isn't this Joseph the carpenter's son? Are not his mother Mary and his brothers and sisters here with us? This boy grew up with us. We know what kind of trouble he was. Whatever it is they filled in the blank with. Paul says, we don't regard him that way anymore because we saw him rise from the dead. He's become something new. And anybody who's in Christ Jesus is the same. Should we be voice activated? <laughs> Obviously, that's one of the main legs of the sermon. If we claim to be voice activated, should we not share those words that God has spoken to us with others so that they might live? Right again. Should we not believe it if we intend upon speaking it? And should we not treat one another as if it were 100% true? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled unto God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. You want to know what your potential is tonight? Your potential is to be fully, credibly, the righteousness of God. That's a promise. Now, you can choose to believe it or reject it. That's up to you. I choose to believe it because God says so. Having believed it, I choose to share it. Having shared of it, I don't let go of it. It's easy to make some gadget do what you tell it to. That's the way it's designed. That's also the way God designed us. With one important difference. You have free will. You see, the amazing thing about what I did at the beginning of the sermon was not that I could make my cell phone work. It's that my son would stand up and do what I said. I asked him if he trusted me. I said, I'm going to ask you to stand up and do something. 
He's like, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure he was thinking, oh, Dad, please don't embarrass me. Don't ask me to come up and give you a hug or something like that. I don't know what he thought. But I'm sure that had I done that, he would have done it. Is God that sure of us? We're not machines. But ought we not to be all the more voice activated? Willingly from the heart? Because of what he has done for us in Christ Jesus? That's a mighty easy thing to say. It's a mite harder to do. But tonight you have the opportunity. And if you're willing, through Jesus Christ, you can become the righteousness of God. He has spoken it. Do you believe it? Do you believe it for your neighbor? If you have a need, why don't you come as together we stand and sing?